So that begs the question, what does it mean to be a consumer-centric business? Because if you're, you're now, if the patient is now paying you, the expectation is different. You can't just offer the medicine that you were offering before, and you can't do things the same way because the consumer expectation today, the bar is set really high. And it's set really high by these guys. It's set really high by Uber and Apple and Aero, which is security, and Squarespace and Airbnb and Amazon. When people think about their consumer experience, they're not thinking about healthcare. They're thinking about the bar that has been set through technology and responsiveness by companies like this. And so if you're going to then offer healthcare and not meet these sets of expectations and standards, you're going to have a disconnect. Um, and so my fundamental premise in starting Parsley was that your medicine should work as seamlessly and easily as your iPhone. Um, and we've done a lot of that at Parsley Health and we're doing a lot more. We actually just hired a UX designer and at Parsley we call it MX, which is member experience. And he's comes from Airbnb, um, actually, and is working with us to redesign all of our tech even from where we are today. But it's really helpful to keep these experiences in mind when you design your healthcare experience because again, your patients are gonna expect when they're paying you directly for their experience to work like this. And that's really scary, but I'm gonna try <laughs> to make it seem a little bit easier and hopefully give you guys some takeaways to think about for the providers and for anyone who's thinking about what um, this should look like. So think about your member experience, your patient experience, PX, MX, whatever you call it, as more than features. So it's not just the what of what you do, it's the how and the how you communicate that and how you present it. So first of all, it's brand. Parsley Health is, is a lifestyle brand and that was very deliberate for me to begin with. We, I knew we had to be aspirational. We had to have a unique voice, values, and aesthetic and I wrote all of those down and we have an operating procedure for every Instagram post, every blog post for how, what our voice feels like, how we communicate our information. It's conversational and credible in our case. I hope that you find your own as you think about your brand. You have to be responsive to truth. So things like NPS scores, net promoter scores, come is a survey, it's a one question survey. How likely are you to recommend this or your doctor or your practice to somebody else? That comes from the consumer world where this is used as that question is felt to be the best gauge for whether or not somebody's happy with your practice. Would they recommend it to somebody else? And you can have people who are neutral promoters or detractors. Uh, we send these out regularly at Parsley for both the practice as a whole and for individual doctors who work with us. Um, and we call and talk to and interview every single detractor and even neutrals and even promoters to understand what they like and what they don't and why they're pissed or why they're happy. Um, relationships over rules, give an inch, get a mile of LTV, which is lifetime value. So like in medicine, where I trained at Columbia and then Mount Sinai in New York, so that's you know my background and my experience, but what I was sort of taught was like, this is how we do things. This is it. It's my way or the highway. This is how the hospital works. This is how the pra faculty practice works. That doesn't work with your consumers. They don't care about your red tape and your rules. And a lot of times you can get a mile of lifetime value if you give an inch on your rules, whatever those happen to be. So example, we had a member in our LA practice. She sort of had a like, weird life um, crisis that had nothing to do with Parsley Health, so not our fault, didn't come in and use her membership and wanted to restart it a couple months later because she had paid for the year up front, but she hadn't used it. The rule would have been, well, sorry, like you could have come in at any time, you didn't. But we said yes, and we let her restart her membership, made her really happy, and now she'll be a promoter and she'll send five more people our way, or 10 or 20, because 50% of our growth to date at Parsley is all word of mouth, our patients telling other patients, which by the way is free. Um, and then proactivity instead of reactivity, just anticipating problems. So looking at your consumer journey, your patient journey, anticipate the sticky points, and as opposed to like waiting for people to complain to you, Go through the experience yourself. Get your husband or your wife or your best friend or somebody who's going to be honest with you. Um, I find, like, for our advisors for the company, uh, I, I have them go through the Parsley journey and then I have them get on the phone with my husband and they'll tell him all the things that, like, they don't want to hurt my feelings and tell me. And I learn so much. So, and then that allows us to be proactive when it comes to problems in our user journey as opposed to reactive.